campaign for the Hong Kong economy, if you could, please. Yes, indeed. Uh, in some ways, Hong Kong is luckier than many other countries insofar as it has a, a deep uh, pile of reserves that can be applied to, uh, to the economy. The government has virtually no debt. Uh, the co companies in Hong Kong are not highly leveraged and households in Hong Kong also do not carry a lot of uh, debt in terms of uh, credit cards, um, higher purchase, and so on. Uh, and the banks are in pretty good shape. So in that respect, Hong Kong's pretty lucky going into all of this. So I, I think Hong Kong can expect what I would call a, a profit and loss account problem more than a balance sheet problem, whereas I think in a lot of countries it's going to be a severe systemic balance sheet problem. Hong Kong is probably not going to be in that position, but we'll definitely see uh, a, a big pullback in earnings and profitability uh, across the board in Hong Kong generally. So, Peter, tell us a little bit what we can expect for normal Hong Kong citizens. We are expecting Hong Kong jobless numbers out today, and we're expecting a six-month of increase. How bad could it get for households? Well, I put it this way, the official numbers for unemployment in Hong Kong are, have risen from about 2.8% to about 3.7%. Still very low, but we all suspect <clears throat> that those figures uh, do not actually uh, give us the true picture because we've got something like 10% um, of the workforce in Hong Kong or 10% of the population works in what you might call the gig economy in casual employment, self-employed and so on. And uh, those, those people I don't think get picked up in the unemployment numbers. So I think the unemployment figures are probably somewhat worse than the official uh, numbers would suggest. And I, I can think that those official numbers are going to go from 3.5% right now to something around 5 or 6% over the course of the next couple of months. So I think we can expect to see it get worse before it gets better. Peter, you've talked about sort of the positive points or the, the parts where Hong Kong is handling things better than others, the handling of the virus, the amount of debt on balance sheets for most companies, for example. But I'm wondering, is the bigger problem for Hong Kong really that longer term existential question as to, to what happens after this? We have the, the pro-democracy versus establishment issue still very much, you know, as we saw over the weekend with the arrest, still very much the key issue there. Well, I, I think um, it's certainly the, the social unrest last year in the second half of the year ha took a big toll on the economy. Uh, we've seen for 13 months now uh, retail sales have been declining consistently for 13 months. Uh, and and uh, in, in February, they were down 44%. Uh, we're also seeing a very significant drop-off in in tourism, which is a big part of the local economy. Uh, visitor arrivals are down more than 95% uh, as we speak right now. So that's playing a big role. Uh, so this collapse in visitors and tourism from across the border and from around the world is going to have a continued impact on, particularly on the hotel industry, food and beverage, and on the retail sector very clearly. And that's playing through into declines in uh, uh, office prices, office rents, retail rents, uh, and so on. Uh, new, new business registrations are down about 20%. So you're seeing uh, a medium term, um, uh, medium term problems uh, that have been around for about a year have now been exacerbated by the coronavirus. Does that tension with the mainland also, in a way, minimise the amount of upside benefit that Hong Kong is likely to get from a, a China recovery? Well, if, if you think about the Hong Kong economy as a, as a warrant on the China economy, um, if you look at it that way, because the Hong Kong economy is highly dependent on trade, on capital flows, and on highly dependent on the, the China economy, uh, everybody's expecting that the China economy will rebound in the second half of this year. And uh, I think the consensus figures are that the economy will grow by 1% to 2% on a year-on-year -year basis. 
uh, for, for 2020, most of the rest of the world is going to be negative. So in that respect, uh, Hong Kong will benefit from any recovery we see in China, albeit a very fragile and weak recovery. So Hong Kong, in a way, is, is well positioned to benefit from that uh, expected recovery in China. So I think um, in some respects, uh, Hong Kong can see itself as fortunate in that regard. U.S. lawmakers now calling on the president to review Hong Kong's special trading status. Are you concerned about this? Um, not, not particularly. I, 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 I don't really think that's a, it's going to be a, a big issue. Um, you know, Hong Kong is going to continue to be a trading hub for China. Uh, it's going to continue to be the financial center where, where uh, China companies raise capital in the international markets uh, and so on. So I think those functions will will continue, and they they exist outside of uh, outside of um, sort of uh, uh, politics in a way. Uh, Hong Kong still exists and will continue to exist as a uh, capital raising center for China, where uh, many many companies raise capital both in the equity markets and the debt markets uh, through through Hong Kong and it's, and it's still the biggest uh, the biggest source of foreign capital for China is still uh, through Hong Kong to a very large extent but for how long we have seen Beijing's efforts to continue to open up the financial markets in China will Hong Kong's importance in the financial markets just continue to decrease especially after the coronavirus outbreak and of course the ongoing political tensions yeah, that's that's correct. You're certainly seeing uh, Shanghai is trying to open up uh, its debt and equity markets, but the big the big issue that I, I think will limit the way in which that can happen in China is that China still has extensive capital controls, um, and that that I think will inhibit uh, the way in which uh, China's own capital markets will evolve. Certainly in the domestic market, we're going to see a big expansion of uh, local debt markets and local trading uh, within the, 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 uh, the existing framework within, within China. For example, most of the stock market in China is dominated by retail investors. Uh, the the uh, institutional investment scene is very, uh, very young and very new. That is going to grow substantially in China. And also we're going to see that in institutional investment flows, uh, I think, head offshore as well. Uh, and so I think places like Singapore, Hong Kong, London, New York will benefit from that, uh, those, those uh, increasing international flows. Peter, in a place where the wealth and poverty gap is already extreme at the best of times, how much concern is there when it comes to the welfare safety net as we see unemployment become such an issue? That is a very big issue in Hong Kong, as you, as you point out. Uh, it's, it's, it's fair to say that the, the wealth gap in Hong Kong is, is uh, uh, one of the, the highest in the world. The Gini coefficient, as it's measured as one of the worst in, in the world. Uh, and so the, mm. yes, that is a, a very important factor. There is not a well-developed uh, social safety net in terms of unemployment. Uh, but on the housing front, something like 50% of the total population lives in government-subsidized housing uh, of one form or another. So in some respects, there, are, there, is, um, there, there is some kind of social net. But when it comes to unemployment, uh, education, and uh, that kind of thing, uh, Hong Kong is much less well-equipped than many other developed societies, for example, around, around the, uh, the Pacific Rim and, and, and the UK, Europe and the US. Is Hong Kong in real danger of losing its position as being, you know, the gateway to Asia, the, the premier financial and, and commercial centre of Asia, or has it already lost that, given what we've seen in the last seven and eight months? Uh, well, there's always that, that risk. I mean, for example, Singapore has been developing uh, its own financial services centre very, very strongly and very, very well over recent years. They have developed certain uh, aspects of the financial services industry, which perhaps Hong Kong has lagged behind in, uh, for example, in, in, in financial technology uh, and the establishment of real estate investment trusts and various instruments like that. Singapore has moved ahead uh, from uh, other cities and region. 
However, uh, Hong Kong still is the second or third biggest um, uh, source of capital raising as a stock market in the world, uh, and, and that oscillates backwards and forwards between London, New York, and, and Hong Kong. That role has not really diminished uh, fundamentally uh, over the last couple of years. Some, some years, some months, it might be London, some might might be New York, but basically Hong Kong is ranked up there in the top three or four in the world. It's also the third or fourth biggest stock market in the world. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's, still, it's still up there, but you're absolutely correct. There's always competitive uh, forces operating somewhere uh, that can undermine uh, and, and take business elsewhere. So uh, Hong Kong does have to watch out for its, uh, watch its back on these, these fronts.